the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we come to that point in our preparation, the eve of the fast, the eve of the great fast of the church, which has been given to us, of course, to prepare ourselves with ascetical efforts to train ourselves for the life of the kingdom of heaven. And the gospel today, of course, gives us wonderful prescriptions for how to do that, where our treasure should be, where our heart should be, how we should approach fasting and ascetic efforts. Of course, we know how I feel about that. People talking about their fasting and how hard it is and their prostrations and how hard it is. I find nothing much more tedious in that conversation. What I'm eating this week, what I'm eating that week. It's supposed to be difficult. It's not supposed to be easy. So if it's a trial, glory be to God. It's not supposed to be the same way as the rest of your life. So hide your fasting. Hide your prayer rules of what you're doing. Keep that between you and your spiritual father. Of course, do these things. Do them diligently. We, of course, do them to the glory of God, not that you might be seen. But really, the more important matter in the passage today, it deals with forgiving trespasses. The Lord gives us the prescription for how we might be saved. And St. Theophon the Recluse marvels at how easy the Lord has made it for us. All we have to do is forgive people. Now, that's hard for a lot of us and quite difficult, but that is what will save us. If we do not forgive, we are not forgiven. We know what the Lord's Prayer says. Forgive us our debts as we forgive. Of course, many of the fathers forbid saying the Lord's Prayer if you were not forgiving someone because it was to your condemnation at that point, because you were not forgiving. We have many things that we hold against each other and different people, bitternesses, anger, grudges that we bear and we bear and we bear, but these things bear us down. They don't bring us the kingdom of heaven. They bring us hell while in this world, continually bear our souls down with burdens and sicknesses that are too difficult to bear. We've gone through these last few weeks. We had, of course, Zacchaeus with his desire for the Lord. He made great efforts to repent, to change his way of life, to really seek forgiveness for his trespasses by bearing the shame of climbing up the tree, small in stature that he was and hated as he was, but didn't care. He desired the Lord so much. You had the publican and the Pharisee. Of course, we were given this distinction between pride and humility and how we must truly bear who we really are before God with the humble-mindedness of the publican while doing the works of the Pharisee. You had the prodigal son who went away from the Lord into a far country, went to a distant land, as we do when we depart from our God every day. But we also had that beautiful story of the Lord running out to meet him, which it truly is about, when he made that little bit of effort to turn back. Of course, last week we heard that we will be rewarded as we have done to others, or have not done unto others, a rather frightful passage. This week we celebrated the service last night, well not celebrated really, but commemorated, the casting out of Adam and Eve from paradise. Imagine what it must have been like to be them. You knew what paradise was like. You and I haven't been there. Little tastes of it. But they had lived in it. And now they're on the outside looking in. That must be rather hard. We have become so far away from that we don't even remember what it was like. So the goal of our spiritual life, the goal of the great fast, is to try to live a little bit more paradisically, to live a little more as Adam and Eve were intended to live, in purity, with God constantly before our minds. And it's that exile that we experience that we are asking for forgiveness. And the Lord tells us what to do, to forgive others. Let's first ask forgiveness ourselves. But to forgive others. Last night, there were many beautiful, beautiful hymns. The doxasticon of the Apostolica, the glory verse. Adam says, for, for transgressing, breaking one commandment, I lost everything. One commandment. Now often I've heard, well, I don't do much, Father, this, that, the usual little things. I get mad occasionally, try to break the fast here and there. Adam bit a piece of fruit and was cast out of paradise because he was not obedient unto God. So there is no sin so insignificant that we shouldn't pay attention to it. 
And this time of year is giving us the opportunity to put the microscope on our, the magnifying glass on those sins, to pay attention to every detail of our life, and to try to change and to live as we were intended to do in paradise. When we have all these burdens off of ourselves, bearing those grudges against others, life is good. Life feels right. Our hearts become light. So who are we supposed to forgive? Everybody. The Lord gives no options. There are some things He gives a little leeway on in His mercy for us. But with forgiveness of others, there are no options whatsoever. And He gives the Example, by being on the cross and saying, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Those who are crucifying him. Later, that first martyr, Stephen, says, Lay not this sin to their charge, who are stoning him, and sees God in glory. St. Dionysius of Zacanthos, the great ascetic of Greece, harbored his brother's murderer, who was running from the police, who gave him his trespasses. Wow. It's an example for us. Nothing anyone does to us is above being forgiven. It doesn't mean it wasn't wrong. Perhaps it was greatly wrong. Perhaps it hurt. Perhaps it was a serious transgression they committed against us. It doesn't make that right ever. It's not right for somebody to wound us. However, we still have to forgive them. To get that burden off of our heart. That has to be their sin to deal with, not ours. We want to bear everybody else's sins, well, that's a good way to do it. We can't bear our own. How are we going to bear each of the others in that manner? So, we have to forgive everyone, period. It doesn't matter how bad we think they were to us. <coughs> how often do we have to forgive them? And the Lord gives the prescription for that, too. Ad infinitum, every time, every single time, using the sort of Hebrew dialect of 70 times seven, meaning every single time. Does it mean if somebody does something horribly 50,000 times today, you don't have to forgive them on the 50,000th time? You do. Every single time. And remember the story I told before about, about St. Titus of the Key of Caves, you know, his deacon, Evagrius, who would not forgive him even on his deathbed. And he sought that forgiveness finally. And Titus, of course, because he forgave, was raised up from his deathbed, and Evagrius died on the spot, that grace being taken away. It's a frightening story. The story of the blessed patriarch Alexander of Alexandria, who one day, when one of his scribes stole a significant amount of money from the church and fled, was captured by robbers out in the wilderness somewhere, and they sent for a ransom. Alexander sent them 84 gold coins to ransom this thief who had stolen from him, really. And so the people would say, no sin can overcome the mercy of Alexander. That should be us. No sin can overcome the mercy that we can show. And of course, it's a story that some of us read recently in the arena. It's a famous story in the Fathers of February 9th, St. Nikiforos was commemorated. St. Nikiforos was a layman, and he had a friend for a while, the priest Saprikios, who at some point they came to great bitterness with one another, despised one another. And so one day, Saprikios has been captured by the emperor, is being led to martyrdom. And people are sort of cheering him on along the road, the ones who aren't mocking him. <coughs> Nicky Forrest is amazed by this and runs to him and encourages him and, and begs him for his forgiveness for what they did. So Prichios wouldn't answer him, no matter what he said, no matter, no matter how much he begged. And this is on the way to martyrdom for Christ, because he's confessing Christ. Well, when the Lord sees this, all of a sudden that grace is removed from Saprikios, because when we don't forgive, grace is removed from us. At that point, Nikki Forrest begins to beg him, please, please don't do this. He decides he's going to renounce Christ. He begs him not to do this. Well, Saprikios does renounce Christ. At that point, Nikki Forrest begs out to the crowd, please let me be martyred in this place. 
And he receives the crown for the kingdom of heaven because of his forgiveness. He had the grace to bear the martyrdom because he was willing to forgive. So each and every night we need to examine our hearts, we need to examine our consciousness and see is there anything that we have against anyone. And we, we know when that is. We can't sleep. We have those thoughts going to bed. We wake up to pray, God willing. And we can't pray because we're not thinking, Lord Jesus Christ, we're thinking such and such did this to me. How am I going to fix this? What am I going to do about them? Who am I going to tell next about what they did to me? It doesn't work that way. God forbid that's our last night when we repose and we bear bore that on our hearts like Sabrigios or Evagrios the deacon. Not the way to do it. Anytime, the moment someone has something against us, why bear that? Yes, it hurt. Yes, it was difficult. It might take us a lot of praying that we might forgive and working toward forgiveness. It might take years of it. But we have to start from the beginning. Because there is nothing, there's nothing anyone does to us that is worth losing our sleep. And worth losing, more than that, worth losing grace, the grace of God. The comforter, the spirit of truth, is the spirit of peace. He doesn't reside in a heart of bitterness. There's no room for him in that heart. Christ needs a heart that is pure and a heart that is emulating him. And he forgave each and every one of us and continues to forgive each and every one of us every day. So if we want to be forgiven, all we have to do is to forgive. I know that's hard because some of us have some deep wounds. But it's really an easy prescription. What am I to do with Lent? Forgive everyone, every single time. Don't pass them about them to one other soul on this earth. Offer them up to God. Perhaps offer it up to your spiritual father so he can help you deal with it. But don't spread the poison any farther. Cease judgment, because that is what this is about. We will be judged with the measure that we judge. And that is the way to survive Lent with joy, to where we don't want Lent to end because our hearts have become pure with the grace of God. May we from this day remember with the action that we're going to participate in in a couple of hours, may we remember that is what our life should be about, forgiving each other constantly. There's nothing worth bearing bitterness against one living soul on this earth about. Nothing that should separate us from the kingdom of heaven. So let us make that action this afternoon not a one time thing, not the event of February 26, 2017, but the entire way of our life. Forgive me.